Well, I'd like to present you a couple of ideas. Can artificial intelligence advance fundamental physics? And, you know, I mean, it's obvious that there are many, many applications of um, neural networks. And I will take a very long-term perspective on physics. And um, as a motivation, we could think about, uh, well, humans have gone wrong sometimes in the history of physics with their models. Just uh, think about the epicycle model in uh, geocentric astronomy. And an important fact was that this model was kind of complicated. So uh, King Alfonso El Sabio, when he first encountered the um, epicycle mod model in the library of Toledo, he said, if the Lord Almighty had asked me about before embarking creation, I should have recommended something simpler. And that's also the kind of idea you might get when you look at um, today's standard model. Sorry. It's also very, very complicated and you have uh, lots of unexplained parameters. And there were people critical or skeptical about that development in particle physics, but I think these skeptics are almost almost all dead now. Um, by the way, it's not very different from the standard cosmological model, which also has introduced a couple of unknown parameters in the meantime. And from a general perspective, uh, Thomas Kuhn's book, The Structure of Scientific Revolutions, this is a development of anomalies, free parameters, and uh, we see the uh, complication of models and if you just have a look at how many parameters we have in today's models Mike Disney a well-known astronomer has observed that cosmology has 17 free parameters and only 13 independent observations the situation is far from healthy he comments and Lee Smolin observes the number of free parameters in this in the standard model of particle physics is embarrassingly large so it's you can't even count count them anymore if you take in account the masses there would be more than 50 like that so the question is and by the way uh, if you want uh, Einstein's opinion on, on that he was also very skeptical from a general perspective that arbitrarily chosen numbers by God could not exist and their alleged existence relies on our incomplete understanding so this is a, a, a brief general motivation that at least, I mean, you might not be agree with me uh, totally, but at, at least one should consider the possibility that our current models are not the last word regarding the fundamental laws of nature. And on the other hand, we have this very interesting technological development. Surely everybody has heard about uh, Google DeepMind and, and especially AlphaGo, uh, who two years ago beat the world champion in the ancient game of Go, four to one. It was absolutely sensational. And uh, this was this was um, always considered to be uh, a domain of human intelligence. Okay, so everybody was convinced that it might took decades until we arrive at that level because Go is, is a really a game you can't just um, crunch with numbers. There's no way, uh, there are too many possibilities to do it uh, by brute force as it has been done by chess. So uh, it's, it's really, I think, uh, a different, uh, more human uh, kind of, of reasoning what these uh, algorithms are able to do. And uh, by the way, the latest news is that this, the uh, successor of this program learned chess in four days and was able to beat the best chess programs uh, by uh, 28 wins to zero by a couple of draws, 70 draws or something. So it's uh, obviously this is a, is a, it's a huge advance in, in, uh, in artificial intelligence. And we might hope that someday, okay, 
could we apply this to fundamental physics to to reinvent say the laws of physics in an unbiased way without any model prejudices that we currently have and uh, Demis Hassabis the founder of Google Alpha has an interesting opinion about that the, the question was it was a, a session recently in London do you see any chance that such algorithms may rediscover the law of nature in an unprejudiced way say by uh, getting to Newton's law of gravitation from raw astronomical data for example and he said, actually, this is the reason why I did AI. Physics was my favorite subject in school. Uh, when I stopped doing physics, I started doing more AI because I thought we maybe need some more intellectual horsepower to solve that kind of problems. And then he went a little bit into more detail. And But also, of course, there are <laughs> huge problems to solve. It's just a very, a very... Uh, a vision that could take a very long time. Now, if we have these laws of nature, even if, if the problem would detect something, the question is how we are going to recognize that. And what actually might happen, he says, is that we have a system like Alpha Zero that would find some new structure out of the data, but, but it would be implicit in the network. It wouldn't come out like an equation E equals MC squared or something. And the question is how do we get out of this implicit system? I think this is uh, really a unsolved problem. It's very interesting that we humans have been able to um, well get to this very abstract concentration concentration of knowledge and mathematical formulas and uh, okay this is just I, I maybe uh, it's no news to you but that's just the the kind of neural network which was very simplified uh, used by AlphaGo. We have uh, deep so-called deep learning networks which is a version of back propagation with uh, additional hidden layers and uh, well the question would be could we someday uh, take as an input raw physical data and get something out like a mathematical formula but I it's really not possible at that stage it what Hassabi has commented he said that well okay he might the the, the network might find some interesting structure maybe even reduce the free uh, parameters from 17 to 15 or 10 but uh, to get to a mathematical description is still something very very far another s uh, still even more remote possibility uh, or idea i'd like to talk is um, if you think about we're talking about three free parameters okay and uh, a good physical theory should do with less and less free parameters. So the optimal idea, the perfect description of reality would indeed be something like zero um, free parameters and that includes also no physical constants at all. You, it's very, very strange to imagine because at that point, I mean, how do you do physics without the gravitational constants, without h bar, without the speed of light? This is an interesting question because uh, the speed of light, if you look closely, is really an anomaly of Newtonian physics. Not because it's the speed of light, because it's a, it's a limit to matter, to the motion of matter. And there is no reason whatsoever in Newtonian physics that matter shouldn't be accelerated beyond the speed of light. So looking from a methodological perspective, it's an anomaly we could even think about to get rid of, but of course if you get rid of C, that would kind of destroy our <coughs> concept of space and time. And interestingly, the concept of four-dimensional uh, space-time, that gluing of that three-dimensional space and, and one-dimensional time to something four-dimensional is mathematically something very nice because you have rotations in both cases and so on. But there is no a priori explanation why nature presents itself in this very peculiar three plus one dimensional manner. So Einstein even commented humorously on that since the mathematicians have invaded the theory of relativity. I do not understand it myself anymore. But he, Einstein also didn't actively object against this concept of space-time as such. But we might even uh, try to question that. I have gone into a little more details in a paper uh, C, of course, would be anomaly, 
and uh, H would be an anomaly that cast out on, f uh, on Newtonian physics. And uh, we, might, we might be forced to question even uh, if space and time are the real best concepts for describing reality mathematically. Or are, or are they just the more accessible ones to human perception? So, I have outlined this in, in that paper you can find on the internet about the origin of constants C and H, but it's very, very, very difficult to work at it. And one uh, thing I stumbled upon uh, is a very interesting uh, mathematical properties of the unit 3 sphere, which is quite the same thing as unit quaternions. And uh, well, there are some really interesting uh, purely mathematical properties like the tangent space, like the fact that it's the simplest manifold which, which shows non-commutativity and so on that you might faintly relate to the properties of, of these constants C and H. But uh, in any case, it's a very hard thing to do because we lack the... Um, the visualization, what we have in, in, in other branches of mathematics. So uh, mathematical functions is quite easy to visualize, but once you go to more than three dimensions, it's really hard uh, for the brain. And so the question is, um, could we someday get artificial intelligence to rediscover mathematical structures in a more human way, in a more intuitive way, rather than the, well, very uh, algorithmic way it has also been implemented. So, and uh, well, this is an interesting book by J. Uh, George Lakoff, uh, focusing on the on the uh, how the human mind uh, does mathematics. And what I mean is uh, something along these lines. We have, for example, um, complex numbers. Uh, Leonhard Euler didn't discover them, but he discovered that famous formula and worked a lot of it. So uh, you might arrive at, at uh, complex numbers if you just think about the mathematical st uh, structure of an algebraic field, which is multiplication, addition, and so on, and all these um, properties, and say, OK, real numbers are too boring. Is there some anything two-dimensional? And then you might arrive at the, at the complex numbers. And I wonder if it's possible that on artificial intelligence, by just checking multiplications and additions could intuitively, not, not in the strict sense of a mathematical proof, but intuitively arrive at, at those properties. And then it would also be interesting, I mean, uh, Sir uh, uh, William Hamilton, he has spent, I don't know, a decade or, or, or so on pondering the question if there is something like the complex numbers in three dimensions and eventually he really realized it's not possible. But uh, then he came up with the quaternions and this ingenious uh, extension of the, yeah, I mean, a little bit of the idea of the complex numbers. You kind of double the complex numbers and <coughs> you have this uh, structure of quaternions and unit quaternions, which again are um, equivalent to the to the uh, unit sphere in three dimensions. So this is, well, hope it was not too far out from, it, from your interest. Sorry, I forgot even the conclusions. Well, the conclusions would be um, there is uh, the current models of physics, the standards model are suspiciously complicated. So we might be aiming to uh, use artificial intelligence to rediscover these, these laws of nature in an in a unbiased way. And, but uh, it's certainly a, a long way to go. We have to think about how to teach uh, the networks mathematical structures and formulas. And uh, I think that's one of the, one of the key questions. Uh, even if we want to make further advances and and thinking about new mathematics or even rediscover something really new in mathematics. I don't know if that's, that's possible. Um, but that would be certainly a challenge we, uh, on which it's useful to work. 
if you're interested you can have a look at uh, some of my books here uh, it's bankrupting physics it's a little bit the, the critique of the standard models which is an English translation of that <coughs> book and the first one was more about cosmology this is more about particle physics and this is an English version of it and the last book um, sorry this is so slow the last book talks a little bit about these ideas of uh, getting rid of C and H and questioning the concept of space and time. Uh, well, thank you very much for listening. I'm happy to answer any question. Yeah, as my dear colleague from the MPI in Munich would say, Leo Storowski would say, a mind-expanding talk uh, is a good talk to close the session for today, but there's one question by Thorsten. Maybe a comment. Um, so you asked the question, how can a um, neural network s give us physical laws? Well, think about human brain networks. First, the, 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 the neural networks we are training at the moment are on the stage of babies who learn to crawl and to recognize that something is falling and mm -hmm. have physical laws implicitly in them. So how do you get a baby to detect how did Einstein, well, he learned to communicate. So what we probably need is we have to teach at some point or make these machines talking. And maybe then it's very fast. I have no idea. So I welcome any, any uh, contribution or any, any thought in, in this direction. It's certainly, it's certainly also a big, I would say it's also a big step passing from just um, getting your language codified. I mean, that's to to less to less intelligent beings than human beings that would be seem quite a interesting task but the, as, as we as we have learned in the meantime it's not very straightforward to translate human language into into written language but it's certainly much easier than than uh, getting formulas physical formulas out of spoken out of spoken laws but not entirely impossible i don't know Thank you.